everyone, welcome back to the Zero Talk. I'm Mia from Zero Addicts. Today, we're diving into something absolutely cool to how robots move and function in the real world, navigation and localization. Sounds technical, but trust me, it's actually super intuitive once you picture it. Let's start with a question. How does a robot know where it is and how to get to where it's going? That's really what today's episode is all about. In robotics, we break this down into two parts. Localization, that's figuring out where am I right now, and navigation, that's answering how do I uh, get from here to there. So, just like when you use your phone to see your uh, current localization and the plot the routes, robots need to do the same thing. But they don't just see a blue dot on a screen, they reply a coordinate system. Let me walk you through a few types. First, there is a word coordinate system like the Martian map. It doesn't move, it's like the Google map for the robot. Then there's the robot's own coordinate system. It moves with the robot. Think of it like your personal space, your left, your right, your front and your back. Next, sensor coordinate system. Each sensor, like a laser scanner or camera, has its own frame of reference. So, when a sensor says, hey, I see an object one meter ahead, it's talking from its own perspective. And finally, object recognition coordinate systems, like when a robot wants to dock at a charging station or pick up a pallet, it needs to understand where that object is in space and how to approach it precisely. Imagine a robot trying to dock at a charging station. It doesn't just go there blindly. It calculates its position relative to the charging pole using its onboard sensors and coordinate systems and aligns itself precisely before docking. Take this charging station for example. It has reflector stickers clearly placed on the front. The robot detects those markers and uses them to locate the charging gives an exact position. And now think about pallet recognition. Robots built on the robotics SSE controller can recognize pallet shapes directly based on their geometry. No need for QR codes or reflectors. They can align their folks and insert with high precision using their object recognition coordinate systems. These are not just a zero article, they are running in the production environments today. So how does a robot even figure out where it is? There's localization. There are two ways, relative and absolute. Relative recognition is like you're walking with your eyes closed, counting your steps. The robot starts from a known point and estimates how far it's gone using things like wheel encoders or gyroscopes. The catch, small errors add up, so it's time for a little wear, but not forever. Absolute localization, on the other hand, is more like looking around and spotting landmarks. Robots do this using three main methods. They can scan QR code or reflectors placed in the environment. They can compare where their sensors see to pre-made map. Or if they're outdoor, they can use GPS or better yet, RTK to get super precise coordinates from state lines. All right, now that the robot knows where it is, how does it figure out the path forward? Let's talk about navigation. There are a bunch of different ways robots navigate, and each one works best in the certain environment. Some use electromagnetic navigation, where a wire is buried in the ground and the robot follows the signal. It's simple and solid. By changing routes, it's a pain. You'd have to dig up the floor. Then there's magnetic navigation using magnetic tap or magnetic nails. It's easy to set up and works indoors and out, but again, not flexible. Changing pace takes effort. If you want precision, there's laser reflector navigation. Reflective panels are placed around the space, and the robot's lighter bunching signals of them to triangulate its position. Very accurate, but also pretty expensive and vulnerable to obstructions. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Natural cloud navigation, or what we call laser slam. The robot scans the environment, builds a map on its own, and keeps updating it in real time. It doesn't need wires, reflectors, or vehicles. It's what most of the robotics use by default. Super flexible and highly accurate, but it performs best in relatively stable environments. Then we have optical navigation, like how your computer mouse tracks movement. Simple, but not great with dirt or rough surfaces. 
And of course, there is QR code navigation. You lay down QR codes on the floor, and the robot reads them with a downward camera. It's precise and easy to update just swap out or reposition the codes. You know, QR codes don't always have to go on the floor. Some customers actually stick them on the ceilings. Here's a great example in a large archive facility. The customer chose to mount QR codes way up on the ceiling. Even from the ground, the robot can easily scan an identity at exact position. That allows it to move smoothly and precisely through narrow aisles packed with shopping units, navigating all the way to the dry drawers for pickup or storage. It's super efficient and it avoids a common issue. QR codes on the ground can get scratched or damaged and need regular replacement. So, putting them on the ceiling, smart move. Visual Slim is another one using cameras to detect textures and match them to a map. It's promising but still developing. Lightning, textures, and cleanliness really matters. Now, the style of the show, Laser Slim, it's the most advanced and widely used method today. Robots use LiDAR to build and constantly update a 2D or 3D map. It's flexible, accurate, and doesn't need infrastructure and smart sensors and software. Sea robotics controllers all support laser stem navigation guide out of the box. Before we move on, let's take a look at how Sea Robotics uses laser slim in real-world applications across three different robot types: forklift, lift robots, and cleaning robots. First up at the Philip factory in the Netherlands, our sector type forklift certified with C standards, moves precisely through narrow aisles, even in crowded spaces and dynamic human machine interaction zones. It operates safely and smoothly. Thanks to laser slam navigation, it can sense its surroundings in real time when new paces on the fly and deliver material racks right to the target location with confidence. And what about cleaning robots? Laser slam navigation is the best choice here too. At our warehouse, the cleaning robots use laser slam to build a high precision map across multiple floors completely on their own. They complete efficient cleaning paces, dodge people and the material on the fly, and even handle a long distance multi area operations automatically. So, whether it's for high precision logistics, fully automated industrial sites, or large complex factories with cross floor challenges, Laser Slam Navigation gives you a powerful, flexible, and a deployment free navigation solution that just works. And if you want, you can also unlock spot for QR code factors and other features depending on your setup. So how do you choose your right one? It depends on your space. Let me give you some quick real-world examples. If you are in a fast-changing area with lots of moving racks or carts, go with Laser Slim and QR codes. Go RAM or elevation change, slim and QR code again. Dealing with shiny glass walls or really long hallways, slim with reflectors. And if your card is black and it doesn't reflect it anything, stick a reflector on it and use laser mode. In fact, hybrid navigation is becoming normal. You get flexibility, accuracy, and stability all in one system. So what's next? First, multi-sensor fusion in AI. Sea Robotics is combining 3D features with AI to reduce dependency on environment cubes. Think navigation with just 10% of fixed landmarks that's wired. Second, compound systems. Laser slam, visual slam, GPS, inertial sensors, all working together for indoor-outdoor navigation. And the third, embodied intelligence, Sea Robotics SRC 5000 controller is designed for weird humanoid robots and supports full end to end navigation with magic maps and reinforcement learning. It's not just about moving anymore, it's about understanding, reacting, and adapting in real time. So, there you go. Navigation and localization, that's the foundation of every robot operation. With the right combination of sensors, software, and strategy, robots can go from just rolling around to navigating the real world like a pro. Okay, next episode, we are going into another function, the recognition capability of the robot. Thanks for watching, I am Mia, and if you have any questions, throw them in the comments or welcome search Sea Robotics at Google or LinkedIn platform. There we have lots of information for you to know more about us. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.